We are back again! That's right, more episodes of Toy Tyrant! Oh no! Man, that was gonna be so good. I was gonna go, whoop! Oh, oh, of course, now it works after I fail the first time. Anyway, today we have another, well, no, this is actually the first time I reviewed a Kingsmart toy. We have a Dodge Viper, what I assume to be a GTSR. In fact, yeah, it does say GTSR. Right on the fender, Cody. You're real bright. <laughs> anyway, straight off, we're not going to talk about color, even though I was really thinking about that. We're going to talk about fit and finish. And what if you're wondering what that means, I'm going to talk about panel gaps again. So, the door's panel gaps. Are there any panel gaps on the door? Well, yeah. But you know what? It's really not that noticeable. Especially, well, except when you look at it from the back, cause then there's a little bit of a, a gap there, as you can see there. But, you know, from a distance, it doesn't actually look that bad. It just looks like, you know, a door gap, as, you know, doors have gaps. So, what you will notice, though, the seats are moved up too much on the car. I mean, look at that. That's ri that's ridiculous. You might as not even a midget would be able to get in that and drive that perfectly. So you know what that means? This is a wind-up toy. Yeah, that's right. You got to wind it up old school, old school, like this. Okay, and then just go like that. Okay, before I let it kill itself, we'll just rewind it even more. But yeah, that's why the seats are moved up so much, and that's why no midget would be able to, would be able to drive this thing. Because no human being could fit in that, no matter what. So move this back as far as possible, and then, you know, as ever. So, what is this car like to look at? Well, apart from the front end being a little bit too... There's too much front end. It's not small enough, as you can see. And I don't mean the overhangs, I just mean it goes down too much. Though I guess it does come out from the hood a little bit too much. But anyway, it actually looks... Pretty proportionate to the Viper. I mean, even the spoiler is perfect. It looks really, really good. It looks pretty much like a Viper, except, well, like a GTSR, except smaller. Now, the rims, I actually kind of like the rims, but they're really not something you'd see on a Viper. I mean, they're not even something you'd see on a normal car. It's something you'd see... Oof. It's, it's something you'd see on a lowrider that's actually not terrible. I mean, you know, you look, you look at the back end, and... Little bit of weirdness there. It's a little bit too small. It needs to the little bump here needs to be brought down a little bit more. But yeah, it doesn't actually look that bad. There's a few good details in here, except the hood vents here are really, really hard to see. I think I wish that they were put in black so it was easier to see, but then you couldn't have that, you know, viper across the hood. You wouldn't be able to do that, which is a little bit of a shame here. Also the front grille is I know the GTSRs had a fairly small front grille, but even that is a little bit too small there. King, King, King Smart, I guess. So what is this like as a pullback car? I don't know. I haven't actually pulled it back and see how fast it could go, but what's funny is I have a Gen 5 over there from the same company, which you'll see a review on later. In fact, it should be after this one. Um, that's front wheel drive, so that means the interior is right, except the drivetrain is wrong. And you know what? Just for, the, just for the sake of this, I'd like to mention that I don't mind where the seats are at all. Because with a car this small, the interior is probably going to be the least of your worries. However, they did they did actually make an effort to put the details in. The instruments are in the right, they're in the right positions, they're in the right colors. The steering wheel is a little bit off, but other than that, they actually got it correct. But you know what, I do prefer that they kept it true to the Viper's rear-wheel drive heritage. And... You know, kept a rear-wheel drive. So, why don't we now talk about the paint? And straight away, these decals are stick-ons. I mean, on the edges, they look pretty good. They're not, it's not easy to tell that, you know, you know stick it on the paint, wash it in, blah, blah, blah. But it does look very, very, oof. I don't want to say ricey, because that's not the right word. Um, I think it just looks very, sort of, low-quality to me. It... It hasn't been blended into the paint job, as I as I've said. If anyone, if any of you remember that Dodge Demon re, uh, review that I did, you remember that I said that even though the paint is flat, it's at, the decals were were painted into the bodywork really well. This, not quite. There, 
on the car, but they're not in the car, if you understand what I'm saying. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it's in the paint job so much so as on the paint job. It's sort of, it's sort of like, instead of being in the car, you're on the car, if that makes any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't really work. Like, take, take the logo. Okay, I know it's red, so that doesn't really help, but it does look closer to being into the paint job than the flames do by comparison and even the words dodge on the spoiler look closer to being painted in there so i i think the car could have done without the side stripes as they just look very stuck on they're not they're not really put in very well and the rest of the paint job it's very flat you 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 think i was saying the may still uh, srt vipers flat this is worse. It it's a nice it's a nice red, but it is so flat. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, there's not much reflection in it other than a few, you know, other than a bit of white light. But ooh, but you know what? The headlights, plexiglass. So you know what? They didn't do the Hot Wheels thing. I put stickers on it. And you know what? That's better. They didn't get the exact lights. Okay, they didn't get the they didn't really get the lights in there. But they did get the shape, and they did get the color right, so I have to commend them for that. They even did so with the rear end, including the, re including the reverse and turn signals, so that's already a plus. And you know what? For that extra bit of detail, rear window defroster. Oh yeah, they put a defroster on that! No one's done that. No one, no one, have I, have, have I heard anyone? Anyone say there's defroster on the models? No. No, they put a defroster on it, and that is some insanely cool extra bit of detail you really don't see. And you'd say, "Oh, well, that just makes it look." But I, you may think it, you know, adds ugliness to it. But I think it actually looks better because it's more realistic. It's it's weird, but details like that really get me because that that to me is just so cool because they don't ever do that. No one ever adds the rear window defroster like they've done here. Or, with, because of modern technology, the rear window defroster doesn't look like that. But either way, that to me is just an insanely cool touch that no one really does these days anymore. And that, it's a bit of a shame, but there might be a reason for that. Either they're too lazy or they don't have a reason to. Also, just realized, see that little black bit right, oops, okay, right there with the door where my index finger is? If that is my index finger? Where my middle finger is, okay? On the actual car, that moves out. That's not stuck to the body like that. So that, I think that's a design choice and probably for good reason as that's where the motor is. But even still, could have added a, you know, could have left that as a detail there because that looks, when you open the door, it looks really, really weird. But anyway, so back to the paint. It's, eh. Now, quality of the model. That's what you've all been wanting. Quality of the model is actually pretty good, but there are a few obvious spots that you can tell haven't been done to perfection like that. If you can see it, no, you can't unless I get even closer and fall out of my chair. No, okay. Anyway, though, there's a line where my finger was, and you can't really see it from far away or even from the camera, but once you get up close, it's like a it's like one of those ugly seams. It's yeah. There's a, there's a there's another one on the other side of the bumper, but it's not as prominent. And then you have another seam that sort of follows that line, but goes up to the hood where the clamshell is. But but you know what? The quality of the model is actually pretty nice, and it's it's it it's a sort of metal. It's not a heavy metal, but you know what? You know what? It's actually a pretty good model. It, the proportions are a little bit off, and if they were off any more than it was, I wouldn't give this a 3 out of 3. But you know what? This is actually a pretty good model as it is. The paint's really dull, but the decals on it make it look really cool. Make it look like a proper race car. So, yeah, it's not actually that bad. There's a few... There's a few... We'll say issues here and there with in terms of model quality but it's not that bad it's actually pretty good 
for what you're getting, and it's like a five dollar toy. It's something really, really cheap. So you're actually getting a pretty good looking model for the money. And now we're gonna go to the next video, which is gonna be the SRT Viper. Except this time it's gonna be a fourteen. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Three out of three. I'll see you later.